Andy for me has been the biggest step of my life up to now because I made this movie without having the real economic resources. I gave all of me, passing through bad moments, moments where I wanted to give up, but I didn't. And that's the result of these four years working. But I believed in the story of Handy because of who, who Vincenzo is and the amount of work that he has put into making this movie. Because I saw a man that, that was given everything. So I realized that what I was doing was not just for me. It was just for all the other people like me who see movies so distant. I took a small video camera and I recorded quite everything I did. How I created the dolly, how I created the green screen, everything. Even if sometimes it was a pain in the ass, because sometimes you just want to do things. But I was taking that small camera, placing there and doing the making of. I was talking to this virtual you that is coming across maybe my same troubles of realizing a dream without having the real economic resources. What I'm doing now is the beginning of the movie. I wanted to show that if I could do it, they could do it. I just want to do this shot with you. It is very slowly. We are what we do. More than his heart and mind, a man is therefore to be measured by his hands, his will to act. <sighs> Sometimes you ask yourself, uh, should I quit? And I was not quitting for this. So when I met him, um, I saw a, a person that, that had the qualities to pull this off, or the stamina to carry it through, and the drivenness in a good way to actually make it happen. I saw a man that really wanted to do something great. I can say that this is really the first end movie in every sense because everything you see in the movie is end made by me. <laughs> From the small things to the biggest one. We have to make it small because <laughs> we don't have, it, have any money. If we had money, we would record a full orchestra. You have a pyramid, it's fast, good and cheap. And you can use just two options. Either fast and cheap, but it's not going to be good. Either fast and good, but it's not going to be cheap. Either good and cheap. But it's not gonna be fast. Yeah, because the movie costed me around 13,000 euros. This money came from my awards that I spent on and uh, my father and my mother financed me because they've been very supportive. Even because with such an original story, it was hard to convince people to believe in it. No one really want to risk on a young filmmaker at his first feature, that it was never gonna be shot. The only way to shoot this movie was the way I did it, I think. Because I remember that, I, for example, I didn't want to edit the movie. But they asked me 50 euros per hour. So I said, okay, I edit. And I became the editor. For the visual effect, they asked me 65 euros per hour per day. And I didn't have money. And that's why I became the visual effect guy. I learned the skills. It's gonna take time, but I can improve on those things. And I think that uh, I can make it. I would definitely say that this film does not look like it's been done by, by one person. The things that Vincenzo has done and the skills that he has had to learn, visual effects, filming, and it's just impressive. And it just shows the commitment that um, Vincenzo has had to, to the, this story, to make it as good as possible. And in this case, Vincenzo had spent so long time making a uh, sequence, it was very difficult to cut it down, but he was able to switch role uh, and see the movie as a whole and be able to cut it down. And the visual effects, I can say it was the hardest part of all. I had to remove pixel by pixel, frame by frame. Every second is 25 frames. If you think how long is the movie, you make the math of how much time I spent on the visual effect. I can only imagine the pain. You worked on this special effect thing, you filmed it, planned it, and then you're looking at it, it's like, it needs to go his ability to change between different roles. He would no longer be the, the visual effects guy or somebody that would have a lot of interest. He would be the, the producer saying he has to go, um, I will need to cut it out. And in future, I, I will have more respect for the jobs of everybody because I will know that behind creating a set, there is so much work. 
behind creating costumes there is so much love you know behind uh, the editor there is patience and their creativity visual effects you gotta understand that and uh, cinematography same thing probably good to have more people on board in the future but this was um, was done the way it was and probably had to be done this way so my equipment was the camera two garden lights a dolly that i created and a green screen my hand and me and my computer that's all i had and i wanted to make it look good like a big movie which was impossible practically <laughs> and he started as a short film first and the idea of andy began after a one short film competition at the Cannes film festival in 2008 with a little short film named the flip trip I never thought that I could win. But even if I won that competition, I was not too happy about that short film because it's shot in, in a bad resolution. I said, what about I make the same story with another character? <laughs> As a crazy guy I went downstairs, I took my Nokia, two megapixel camera, that was the only camera I had in 2008, and I just make my hand moving. And my father sees me there at eight o'clock in the morning, he says, what the hell are you doing? And he sees this and he's like, what the hell? What the hell is this small thing? Is this I am? This footage you're seeing is my ticket back to Australia. I went back to Australia to shoot the film. 1st October 2008, I have to change my plates. The house that uh, I was renting got sold. So they asked me politely to move out. But in that period I was doing already the short film of Andy. I didn't have time to, to search for a house. So I decided to sleep in the van. Love you like a cousin. Love you. Look, look, I kiss you. I built a bed inside this van. So I had to sleep a month and a half in the van. And uh, during the month and a half, I was using the bathroom and the kitchen of a friend of mine because it was winter and uh, it was freezing cold. And sometimes I was waking up in the middle of the night, I was creating stuff for him. What's the problem now? Computer? Yeah, we got to eat. And I was always filming everything for the making of. I'm getting tired. Maybe I'll find a house now. Of course, my parents didn't know about that. They didn't know that I was um, sleeping in a van. And after I made a short film, I was lucky to be selected in amazing film festivals that wanted to screen my work. And they were paying for the travel, the accommodation and the food. Thanks to this festival, thanks to my hand, I managed to travel a lot. So no, at Amsterdam, I'm still congelando. Sempre per fare handy. I'm a Hollywood. Handy, say something. Brussel. Handy. In the Grand Canyon, Ayers Rock, uh, Egypt, Istanbul, uh, Berlin. Thanks to, to Handy. Thanks to the festival who accepted my movie. That I was always taking my camera with me. Because even if I didn't know how would have been the story of and if the feature film, I knew that I needed those shots. I needed I, something whispering in my mind, say like, take the camera with you and just film Andy. And uh, I was shooting everywhere I was going. Every, every time I was going to these festivals, I was taking the camera and then filming it everywhere. But I knew there was precious footage. There have been really good places, really good, uh, good adventures and really good times. Maybe some of the best moments of my life. Thanks to, to my hand, I've been everywhere. I had literally the world at my fingers. And then after I made the short film, I wanted to make the feature film. And in one of those festivals, I had the great luck to meet Franco Nero. I just happened to see, among many films and shorts, a very original short. The short was called Being Handy. It was about seven minutes long. It was so interesting, so interesting that I wanted to meet the director. I had a chat with him and I told him that I really love. I said, it's very original. You are very talented. And uh, if you happen to think one day to do a feature film out of this short, you can count on me. Okay. He was very pleased. A few weeks later, he sent me a script of my part. And I have to tell you, very, very interesting. When he walked into the, in the office, he found that there was like the lights, the set is, was ready because I prepared three days before. And then he said like, where is the crew? And I indicated my crew, which were two girls. 
But he said, like, they are not filmmakers. <laughs> I said, yes. But don't worry about this because it's gonna come up a great work. But in that moment, I thought that in his mind he was thinking, what the fuck I'm doing here? But he didn't because he was very helpful and he was funny. He's a great man. He has a great soul. And I think he really loved the, the character. And he said, like, uh, I see that you don't have money to make this movie, but it came out a really good job. And Andy, Andy was the hardest one to do. The first time, I couldn't walk properly with the hand. It didn't look like a hand walking by itself. How do you make that believable? That was always a, a core challenge for Vincenzo, and uh, I, think it's, I think it's really believable now. So I concentrated first on the appearance of it. I wanted it to look cool and to work naturally. I wanted that it could give emotion to people. And the only way was behaving like a human, even if it was not a human. Start with the center. You can't communicate. So you gotta invent something different to make this character communicate with people. And when that day came, those fingers who seemed to be interlocked forever, separated for the first time. I just wanted to give emotion to people just moving the fingers, because that, the way a hand would communicate. Sometimes when I work on the, on the music, I tend to forget that uh, we're, we're dealing with hands here. Because I think there, there are emotions in the way that Vincenzo has portrayed it. Or like I was imitating that he was happy, or like he was angry. And if you see from where I was coming from, where I couldn't even walk, and now he could dance, he could jump, he could scream, he could make you understand he was angry and all these things made me understand that I was doing uh, a good job as an actor to perform a hand. Dimostrare come una mano possa recitare ed emozionare. And that's why it took me a lot to do that. So if I can make a comparison in cartoons, I can say that uh, and he was Pinocchio and I was Geppetto. I needed to give a soul to this, uh, to this character, otherwise it was just a piece of wood. And uh, all the hands you see in the movie, the 95% of the hands, is my hand duplicated. I'm creating a character for each one of them. If you see, every hand, even if it's my hand, behave differently between all the hands of the movie. He's been very good at developing different um, moves and different actions that is impressive. <laughs> The only hand that I didn't play uh, was a uh, manicure. And the manicure was played by two great friends of mine. Actually, one was my ex-girlfriend and the other one was Alessia Menta. In the beach you see the hand of Alessia and in the world travel you see the hand of uh, my ex-girlfriend and they helped me a lot on this. Acting against my hand was a pain because um, it's my hand, so I can't have my hand in shot in the same time I am in the shot. I used uh, an old shampoo and I was placing on the set uh, and I was pretending that that was hand and I was replacing with uh, the hand in visual effects. Must be the day, but I think you can make any kind of pizza, right? Must be the day, but I think you can make any kind of pizza, right? But I needed a very good actor for the second part of the movie. I'm at Vincenzo in an acting class, and I'm doing my exercise, and when I'm done, there's this guy coming over to me, holding a DVD in his hands, and saying, uh, I like the way you work. Here's my shortcut, watch it. The DVD was the first version of Handy. It was simply awesome. So I said, why don't I make a bigger part for this guy? And I let him drag the story for the second part of the movie. And he said, oh, thank you. And uh, you know, now I'm writing the long version of Andy, uh, a feature film, and I want you. You want me? He loved the part, and, uh, and then we worked on that. We worked on the accent, and we worked on the movement, we worked on everything. Do you like this accent? Yeah, I like. 
All the actors you see in the movie are my friends or family members. First of all, because I didn't have money to pay the real actors. I wanted them to be in the movie because it was my first movie and I was the producer and I said, this is the opportunity. My first movie needs to be with the first friends I ever had. For the costumes, I had the luck to meet an incredible woman, Marucha. She made quite all the clothes of Andy. She made the jacket, she made the jeans, she made all sorts of pants, all, and it was an incredible job. I have a great respect for what she did. The, the jacket of the Top Gun, it was amazing, you know? And this summer, you will have just one choice. All the other costumes that you see in the movie, I did it. I did it through old gloves that I was buying in the cheap market, then I was cutting here and there. It was really interesting to see how Vincenzo worked on uh, the costumes and sets. There was a lot of planning that went into it. And every time we met here in London, Vincenzo would go like, ooh, I need to go to this shop here and this shop there and get this thing and that, that thing. And I can just get a sense of, he has been thinking about this for a long time. Mister Detentico de Mani. Effetto. Remote control. Può premere play e stop. So I can just imagine the stuff that's gone into it. And it shows in the film. Rizzo Sardina and his family were supporting the idea that I was giving them in Photoshop, they were creating the patches and then the patches I was attaching in this way, I was creating these costumes. In my mind, I never lost the target and the target was creating an entire hand world. You gotta invent things. From scratch you have to find solutions, you don't know sometimes how to fix things, you don't know if you are gonna make it, but sometimes they were looking at me in a way like to say, you're wasting your time. This film is taking too much. You are always in front of a computer. You're always playing with modeling. Like if I was happy to do that. Like I was not happy. It was the only way to make this movie. Like I never asked actual help for the movie, you know? I always asked for support. For people who could understand what I was being through. And um, some of them just quit. I think they quit on me because uh, maybe it was too heavy to see me working this way. It was heavy for them to see me working this way. And my idea was so strong to tell this story. I was not going out, I was not having party, or always committed four years narrowed. I had to deliver this story because if I was quitting, it was, the, it was a game over. So there is a line that says, don't tell me. Show me. And that's what I did. They are not completely alone tonight. I think the strength of Handy is the story and the characters that are being portrayed in it. It talks about dreams, aspirations, despair, love, and all big, big themes. And I think it's, it's done in a, in a delicate way and in a way that we can relate to. I want a compromise. You have to be funny, that makes you smile, and sad, that makes you think. All the other things, all the small set, for example, the Andy set, or creating the internal, those were really the most difficult ones. Andy si crea la casa con i cartoni delle pizze, anche perché non ho più soldi. I'm gonna mix these two. I can shoot both sides. I think it looks like crap. That, come on, it looks like a house. Doesn't look like a house. Fatta con due pizze. Tipo ti sento ancora l'odore. Is that thing working? You see the big set and you see your crap ones. In fact, most of the scenes, the time I was writing it, they were amazing scenes. And then what? I couldn't do it. So what I did, simple, I said like, Let's rewrite every scene basing on what I had, which is nothing. And basing on what I was finding and what was the cheapest option, I was building new scenes, I was building new solutions. So practically I shot all the movie inside my house. For example, I shot in the garden, in the living room, or in my room, or in the bedroom, because everywhere 
I could create a set because you got a, a character that is so small that everything becomes big, even a library becomes a Grand Canyon. Most of the movie was shot uh, shot in Sicily because every time you go abroad, and I'm a Sicilian, I can tell you this, when you say I'm a Sicilian, they say, oh, mafia. It's not good. I think Godfather made a bad reputation of us. So I said, if I will ever make a movie, my first movie has to be shot in Sicily, from a Sicilian point of view, narrating a story that is different from the normal Sicilian story. I want to show that there is good here. Because every tourist who comes in Sicily loves this, this land. We have amazing places and I wanted to show this. I wanted to show the art of people. I wanted to show the amazing place where I live. It can be quite cartoony. But it works there because people yeah. will laugh on that bit. Working with Vincenzo has been a real good um, learning curve for me. Um, he has a good balance of freedom and um, detail in the end. Music has started here again with the sad theme you made. I mean, I love that theme. So he, he would give me a lot of freedom in when I was making the music. He wanted me to, to tell the story the way I saw it with the music I would hear in my head. Boom. And he hits the portrait. Yeah, that is probably true. Very specific feedback as to this goes there and that goes there. 32 minutes and 14 seconds. Yeah. Drag the way it is. By doing this, you're helping me a lot. So it's been good to work with a director that really loves film music and, and knows how to communicate that. I want the music to be emotional and delicate. I wanted um, the film to feel delicate, and I think I think it does that. His energy and um, his creativity is a great composer. Sven Nygaard is my name. How did you say your surname? Nygaard. You so know, I, I always spell it wrong. Yes, you do. <laughs> I'll say, I'll Can say, you tell me how to do it? I'll say. And then, luckily, I met Job Franco. He made an incredible job. He had been able to polish all the sound and created all the channels for the 5.1 surround, and he made an incredible mixing. I like to work with positive people. I made the image, and they made the sound and the music, and it was great to work with them, really. In one way, it's more scary when you have the, the full budget. But of course, you get the, the opportunities to do other things that you just cannot do on, on a small one. And the pressure has been really great on him because it's a very personal project for Vincenzo. I couldn't sleep because I had nightmares because I was, you know, once you set up on a path and you think that you're gonna make a movie in two years and then after two years, you still are halfway through and you want to, to get out of this mess. And you walk and walk and walk and you find yourself completely in blackness. It's like black tunnel. You keep walking all the time. You can't see what there is behind. And you can't see what there is forward. You don't know how far you went from the start and how far it's gonna take to end this tunnel. You know, you don't see any lights. You can't go back because you already lost a lot of time, so you just have to move forward, you know? I just decided to close my eyes, you know, and say, like, uh, at least I decide to see blackness. I wanted to show that if I could do it, they could do it. And then, you know, I managed to go through. I remember the first time I saw like 80% of the movie in my art disc. And I said, after all you've been through, you're making it. Because when I look back, I see a young filmmaker that uh, wanted to make this picture film 
and he was thinking to make it in two years and it was fast and like everything and then you see the last hundred meters you see that you are on your knees you just want to end this you just go slowly step by step seeing the light because I, I took so much and I renounced it so to so many things if I could explain to all the people shot by shot of all the story from the beginning to the end I think I told most of my past and I saw most of my future while I was living in the past I kind of predicted things maybe because I became Andy every character of the movie there was a part of me there was uh, that spark of the young Martini when he wants to be a writer and he's very happy there was this craziness maybe of the old Martini there was this dark side but deep feelings of Frank the Black most of all there was Andy um, the, the way Andy was dealing with things the way Andy was falling in love the way Andy was not giving up the way he was pursuing his dream this need to communicate to the world what he had inside I realized that I was in every character but most of all I became Andy you end the movie you look back and you see how many things you gained and how many things you lost in the process I hope that I gave uh, I can say my my hand to somebody with this story with this concept that uh, and he did it and you can do it and uh, and sometimes you think um, wow people are gonna watch 100 minutes movie and I spent four years on making it you get a little bit sad you know but at the end it was like climbing Everest and uh, I managed to put uh, all my life in 100 minutes and I think this is a great achievement ciao